Hi, Reebly. Welcome to the second week of STEM. I'm going to start with a song this week because Mrs. Traeger reminded me that we always sang a song at the beginning of our kindergarten, first grade, and second grade STEM lessons. This was one of the songs we tried last year. Good morning, dear earth. Good morning, dear sun. Good morning, dear trees and the flowers, everyone. Good morning, dear bees and the birds in the trees. Good morning to you and good morning to me. Good morning. The next thing we would usually do in class is read the message of the day. So here is my message for you today. Welcome. Well, can you read it with me? Welcome to our second week of online STEM. Last week, we made a chain reaction contraption called Rube Goldberg machine. Today, we will study floating and sinking from Mrs. Hopkins. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to read you a story and it's all about sinking and floating. Let me get my book. Floating and sinking. Floating and sinking. Floaters and sinkers. If you toss a rock into a pond, it sinks. Throw a stick in the pond and it will float. In liquids and gases, floaters rise up while sinkers fall down. Solid objects are not the only things that can sink or float. Liquids and gases can too. Balloons filled with helium gas float in the air. Water sinks when mixed with oil. In this, they're talking about things that are solid like rocks or sticks. They're talking about things that are liquids like water or milk or juice. And they're talking about things that are gases. Do you know what they mean by that? Well, one thing they mean is air. Another thing is there's other gases, like inside some balloons, there's a gas called helium, and it helps the balloon go up because of how its density is compared to other gases. Let's see, density, here we go. An object's ability to float depends on its density. Objects float if they are less dense than the liquid or gas that they are in. A wood boat floats because the wood is less dense than the water that it's sitting on. So if the rock is more dense, it goes down. And if the wood is less dense than the water, it stays up. Can you think of something that you know would be less dense than water? Something that floats? Can you say what it is? I thought of one, ice. Ice in my cup of water, it floats. Unless there's so many they stack on top of each other, but just one piece of ice, it floats. So it must be less dense than water. Hmm. Objects sink if they are denser than liquid or the gas they're in. Metal coins sink in a water fountain because they are denser than water. Can you think of something that sinks to the bottom of the water when you throw it in, something that must be denser than water? Say what you think. I'm thinking sometimes my earring, if it falls out, if I dropped it in water, it would fall to the bottom. Maybe the metal in my earring is pretty dense. Buoyancy. Buoyancy describes an object's ability to float. An object's buoyancy is determined by its density and its shape. Thin, round lily pads are so buoyant that a frog can sit on them without sinking. 
buoyancy is also determined by the force of a liquid or a gas pushing up from the bottom under the object. Pond water pushes on the bottom of the lily pad to help it float. Here's the frog sitting on the lily pad. He looks pretty heavy for a frog. In my backyard, we have these tiny little frogs, but this guy looks huge. Oh, here's a fun fact. It says a child can lift an adult in a swimming pool because of the buoyant force of the water helping them pick up the heavy adult. Have you ever tried to lift up a big brother or sister or your mom or dad in a pool and you could do it, but regular life, you couldn't do it outside the pool? That's what buoyancy helps you with. Displacement. When you place floaters and sinkers in water, the water level rises. So if you put a rock in, the water will go up a little bit. This happens because the objects move or displace some of the water. In this picture, this child has put a little ducky in the water and some blue rocks at the bottom and they're measuring how high the water is. On the next page, they put more rocks, shiny pebbles of blue in the water, and it pushed the water up. Can you see? More rocks pushed the water up and it displaced the water up higher, and he can measure it with the ruler. One, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three in this picture. Both sinkers and floaters displace water. This floating duck and the sinking rocks each displace some water. The duck floats higher when the water level rises. Archimedes. More than 2,000 years ago, Greek scientist Archimedes studied floating objects. He noticed that the objects displaced some water and the water pushed up on the floaters. He discovered that the force of the water pushing up on the floaters equals the weight of the water displaced out. Today, this is called Archimedes' principle. It works the same with all liquids and gases. Here's a picture of Archimedes. Archimedes first discovered displacement while taking a bath. He saw how he caused water to spill out of the bathtub. Have you ever done that? I've had that happen before where it spills out. Using buoyancy. People can use buoyancy to float. Hot air balloons use hot air to float. Hot air is less dense than cold air. The hot air rises up lifting the balloons into the sky. Some of you might live near my house where you see balloons like this in the sky. I live in Windsor and we have those sometimes in the sky. Have you seen them? Nature uses buoyancy too. Most fish have an air sac. The sac fills with air to help the fish float up in the water. It can empty out to let the fish swim deeper. So these fish have air sacs. And it can go up and down. That's a beautiful fish. Making sinkers float. Changing a sinker's shape can help it float. A large block of steel sinks in water. But if the steel block is changed into a ship, it will float. The shape of the ship covers a larger surface area. The water has a bigger area to push on, and this makes the ship float. Most ships have a line painted on them. The line helps sailors know when the ship is carrying too much to sail safely. Here's a picture of the ship. Okay guys, so now here's your challenge for sinking and floating. We found out that some things sink and some things float depending on a couple of things. They could be denser than the water or the air that they're floating in, or there could be some buoyancy related to the shape of the object. So the first thing we're gonna test out is density. 
And what you're gonna need is a few items. I'm in my kitchen. These are the items I'd like you to collect. You need a bowl or a sink that could have water in it. You need some water. You need some foil. And you need five objects that you can test out that are okay to get wet. They won't get wrecked. Okay, so what you'll need to do, here's my objects. I wonder if I can do this. If I turn my screen down, can you see the objects I picked up? I picked out a fork and a pencil and a straw and what's that, a binder clip and a paper clip. I found a bread bag clip and a clothespin and a perler bead. And there's my foil. Here's my big bowl. And here's my sink. So either one would work as long as I closed up the sink so I could have water yeah. in it. So what I'll do is I'm going to take my big bowl and fill it with some water. And I'm just going to leave it in the sink because then I won't make a mess. And then I'm going to try out my things and see if they sink or they float. Okay, my bowl is full of water and it's inside the sink. And I'm going to try to aim my computer screen down so you can see it. There's my bowl of water. So I'm going to try out, hmm, how about I try out this die? Do you think it will float or will it sink? Is its density more than water? Let's see. Oh, it sank. So I want you to try out five of your own objects. Find out if they sink or they float. So once you've tried all your five objects and found out if they sink or they float, here's what you'll do next. You get to share what happened with your experiment so that I can see it and all your friends can see it too. I shared with you a document. Here's what it looks like. It says I'm sharing my screen, so that means you can see it. The document's name is What Sinks, What Floats, STEM week number two. And your teacher should have shared this link with you and your parents, just like they shared this video with you. When you open up the document, you'll be able to change the document inside. And so say my name was Trevor and I'm in Ms. Beseda's class and I tried out the dice just like I, you know, I just did. So then I would say object I tried, I'd find this box and I'd write, I tried dice or one die is fine. And then did it sink? Did it float? Actually, it sank. So I'm going to put sink. And I'd put my name, I'm pretending I'm Trevor. And I'm pretending that I'm from Ms. Beseda's class. So you would type that in. You can type all five of your things. You can type one of your things. And don't type on top of anyone else's words. So if I come in and Trevor's already typed that, and my name is Lucy, and I'm from Mrs. Bowman's class, and I tried a rock, then I would type rock underneath it. I wouldn't go on top of his word and write on top of it. No, no, I wanna leave his word there and I'd write rock underneath it. And that I think the rock would sink. I guess I'll let you figure that out. And I'll put my name is Lucy and I'm in Mrs. Bowman's class. And then you can come back later and check out what your friends did and if their things sank or they floated. Okay? Okay, so now you've tried the first challenge, which was about floating and sinking. And you found out some things that are denser than water and they sank, and things that were not as dense as water and they floated. This part of the experiment is your second challenge. The second challenge is about buoyancy. And buoyancy is related to the amount of surface that an object has that displaces water. So if more water is displaced, there'll be more buoyancy up against it. So this experiment asks you to have two new supplies. Actually, I think one of them was on the list before. Your new supplies are, one, still your sink and bowl, two, still need water, 
three, foil. I think I had that on the list before, but we didn't really use it. And four, pennies or dry beans or some other small object that you can have a bunch of, like a handful of to use and that are okay to get wet. I have a bowl of pennies and here's my foil. Using foil, if you haven't used it before, I want you to have your parents take out the piece of foil because on this edge right here, it's like a little knife and it can cut you. It's meant to cut the foil. So if you've used it before and you're a big kid, no worries. But if you haven't used that before, have your parents pull out a piece for you. You need two pieces that are the same size. So I'm gonna pull out one and then I'll pull out another one. So now I have two pieces about the same size. The first piece, what we're gonna try is we're gonna fold it. I'm gonna fold it. And then I'm gonna fold it again and fold it, making it really flat. Fold it. It's getting smaller. Fold it and fold it really flat. Maybe it could go smaller. You can make it smaller if you want. Now, we're gonna see if we have a small piece. Oh, I can't make it much smaller than that. It's really hard to do. Um, if I have a small piece and I put it in the water, will it sink, will it float? What will happen if I have a big piece and I leave it kind of bigger and more open? Will it sink or will it float? Flat, let's see what happens. Here's my bowl. In the sink, can you see it? I think you can. So I'm going to take my thing and drop it in. Oh man. So that's my piece that's really small. And now, what do you think will happen if I put this one on here? Oh, it almost doesn't fit. I kind of have to turn up the edges a little bit. But like, I want to keep it kind of open and big and see what happens if I have more surface. Hmm. The water's getting inside. Hmm. But it does just sit there. So, what happened? What happened when we had a bigger area touching the water or a little area touching the water? Now let's take the second piece of foil and turn it into a boat. A boat that has a big wide bottom and just comes up on the edges. So let me see if I kind of turn this edge up a little bit like that. Do you think it will float? Let's see. It floats. So in our experiment, where something had a tiny surface area all folded up, it didn't float very well. It didn't displace very much water. It just shot down to the bottom like a diver diving straight in with a pointy hand. But if it spread out really wide, then our boat floated. It was able to push away some more water and be more buoyant. I'm wondering if you can make your own boat, your own boat that has the ability to hold some weight. These two things, they both weighed the same because they were the both the same size of foil with the same material. They had the same weight, but this one was squished up really small and this one was spread out and able to push away more water. If I have this boat, can you design a boat that will carry one penny and not sink? Can you make a boat that will hold two pennies, three pennies, 10? How many can we do? I want to know. One, two. How many can your boat carry? Have a good week, guys.